Shaheem Re Revolt TV. We're out here in my home borough of Queens, Hollis to be exact. We're in front of Jam Master J Mural. October 30th marks the 15th anniversary since he's been taken away from us. Jam J, we miss you. Jam J, we love you. We're gonna rep your legacy forever, and we thank you, Jam Master J, for everything that you contributed to hip hop and music with Run DMC. Jump on the job and listen to the jam master as he starts to rock. His I saw Jam Master J first time at Chuck Chillow's birthday party in the Bronx at the Stardust Ballroom, and I was following Jay around. I didn't know Jay then, yeah, but I was following him around, Stardust Ballroom in the Bronx. This had to be like, what, 90, I mean, 87, mm. 88? Oh, so they was full blown. Yeah. It was full blown. Hell yeah. He was a rap back then, and um, just talking about his impact and his legacy, what do you think is the biggest thing that JMJ is going to be remembered for? Just being a real good DJ and the flavor he had. It's just Jay's aura. That's what it is. Just Jay's aura. When he come around, just his aura was flavor. That's what it is. His whole aura. I'm here with House House. What's up? Um, you see what he got in his hand right yes, now. Sir. Old English. He got the, the old E. That's what we used to do. You definitely heard Run DMC rap about that. A few times in, in, in their music, man, and this was one of the people who first passed the passed the old gold. Old English and, and Guinness style, we called it Cold Kunta. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we, we invented. Mixed together? Yes, mixed together. Damn. Black beer. What was it like when you got a chance to actually see him performing with Run DMC? I was proud of him. Yeah. Their first performance was at the Encore, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, and Hollis had beef with the South Side. And bottles oh, started I'm flying. I'm from Southside, man. Yes. Let's show some yes. love, man. Show Come love on, to the Southside Grandmaster Southside Vic Queens. GMP. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah, up? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Those Southside, are my dudes. Those man. are my dudes. I got a rap. at that time, youngster. At that time, back, back in the days. At that time, youngster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the avenue was where? 165th? Yeah. Where the Coliseum is. Where, where everybody you met at. Yeah. And it was Hollis Southside. Woo. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so what happened when everybody met up? Everybody meeting up? They going to the they going to the gym and um, run DFC get on. So you got Hollis on one side, you got Southside the other side, but then you got Run DMC in the middle. Well, Run DMC represented Hollis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what was it like? You know, just to it was a little it was a little tense, but they broke through the door, man. They just they shut it down. Yeah. What did what did they had nothing, how, that Southside night? had nothing to do but fall in line and love us. <laughs> Big lad. What's good, y'all? How's everything going? Jam Master J, one of your clients when, when you was cutting hair. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Jam Master J definitely used to come to the hut barbershop. I mean, like, if everybody's seen the Belly movie, we did. they shot the Belly movie there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he used to come there. That's where he actually got his hair cut from. So he would come there every two weeks, get his face done, get his hair cut, and all that. Now, what was the barbershop talk with Jam Master J? Did he... Like to talk about who was the hot rappers? Did he like to talk about the hood politics? What was the barbershop talk like with JMJ? Well, as far as Jay, like he would definitely come in there, and he was like a regular, normal person. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't you didn't get that much of a conversation as far as who was the best rapper or the best DJ. You might get it once in a while because we had Nas that came in there a couple of times. Um, Excuse me. We had Biz Markie to come in there sometimes, you know, and we had a lot of your um, your Jamaican artists like Louis Bonton, Shabba Ranks, and all of them. They used to come through, but we never we, we never really got into that. You know what I mean? What, it was what never, did y'all talk about when he came well, in? Well, as far as barbershop, you know, we we snapping on you. We snap on Jam after Jay. Oh yeah, yeah. With no problem, you know, we just snap on him all day. You know what I'm saying? Louis Rankins, if he came in there, we gonna we we snapping on him. You know what I mean? So it was a fun atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like it wasn't like it was tight because they was a superstar. Jay you know what had I mean? jokes too. Jay. Oh, Jay always had jokes. You know what I mean? Jay had his jokes. Um, he wouldn't let people cut his hair, not unless you were a certain person to cut his hair. You know, and if you thought you could cut his hair, he would say, Nah, you know, nah, you ain't cutting my hair. You know. He, he went through a few uh, hairstyle phases. Remember Jay with the with the dreads, of course. You know the flat top. 
Right. Uh, he had the Baldy, the Caesar. What 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 was what was your favorite way to cut JMJ's hair? What was your favorite style? Okay, so back in the days, like when he started coming, he definitely had the regular Caesar with you know with the gold tee, and he would have it you know what I'm saying shaped up inside. You know that was yeah. his thing. You know what I'm saying? Because when he wear the cap and all that, some, sometimes he had the beard, like yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, other than that, he, he wasn't too crazy, though. You know what I mean? Because we both went to Andrew Jackson High School. He came to school one day, and he was telling me about the movie, and then he actually said, yo, if you want to be in Crush Groove, he said, come down. I, I think it was Manhattan Center or something like that. He said, yeah, come yeah. through. Tell him I'm your cousin. And I went down and said I was his cousin. I was in Crush Groove after that. What was you doing? I, I missed I missed that part. So you know when, when when I think about Crush Groove, I can only think about the love scene with Sheila E. That's <laughs> that's the only thing that that I could remember from back in that days. After that, the movie was a blur. Right, right. Well, <laughs> Crush Groove. My parts. I actually played. I didn't play a major part. You know what I mean? I played an extra, but I do have cameos. I'm seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? What, what was what was that scene like? What was just the atmosphere of being on the set of Crush Groove? What oh, the atmosphere was amazing because you had you had Curtis Blow, you had Sheila E. And what's crazy about that, Prince would come to pick Sheila E. up. What? That was crazy, yo. Prince would come pick Sheila E. up. He'll sit there, he'll sit in the back with us, chill out, you know, laughing, joking, you know, like it's, like was, it's nothing. Now was Prince drinking the old English? Nah, y'all didn't slide yo, him no old E. Prince, Prince, funny like you wouldn't even. Nah, Prince ain't drinking the old go. <laughs> <laughs> Run went to Jackson, so I know him from gym class. Wow. So we really, and then my brother went to school with his older brother. So I know these guys. What it is is, yes. We we know this guy. Like when you know someone, and it's so horrible and it's unsolved. We got to keep it going. Yeah. We have to. We got to keep it going because we want to pressure them to really solve my man's untimely death. Yeah, when, when you was coming out with your group, man, mm -hmm. um, JMJ was one of the executives at Def Jam. Tell me about getting the call from him the first time y'all spoke. Well, the first time Jay actually signed me to JMJ. He had got he had signed Onyx. Um, I believe Afros was signed to JMJ too. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, fifth, fifth was around that time, right? I'm not. Fifth wasn't there yet. Fifth, fifth was yet? a little bit later. Okay. You can't you can't really find too many people that had any bad words for you know what I'm saying about Jay. And you know I I almost wish you know a lot of times that that we had worked a little bit more, but he was just he he was so genuine and. Being, I think, you know, I don't want to toot my own. It was some people that I, you know, that I helped find out here. And I think I got a lot of that from him. Because like I said, the first thing I said is like his talent evaluation skills was, it was it was up there with any of the best hip hop execs in the game. You know what I mean? F 15 years, man. It's, it's, it's been so long since he's gone. Yeah. Um, still no person captured in, in, in his case, man. Like, nah, what do you nah. think about the, the lack of justice that's been, been brought? Um, I think it's really the streets. You know, it's, I don't think it's really... I think the person who... or the people who did it would have been caught if the streets would have cooperated. It seemed like they was right on the verge of you know, solving it, and if 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 this case is never solved, can, can it's going to be solved? I feel it's going to be yeah, solved soon. Hopefully, yeah, it's going to be solved. I mean, who would think 15 years? But then you look at Biggie and Tupac death. You know what I'm saying? And it's what 20 years or something like that. Yeah.